Alex. And in the studio with me is none other than Tony Barber. Welcome. Good to be with you, Alex. And and Tony, I've, I've asked you to pop in and uh, not a lot of people would know where it all began for you. They, they're familiar with your work on television, even up to now with uh, Channel 31, the Renaissance, etc. But where did it start? Where were you born? And so Well, I, I uh, came out from England in uh, 1947 as a seven-year-old uh, with my parents. It was the first uh, migrant ship uh, after the war under that scheme whereby uh, tradesmen and ex-servicemen were not only did you uh, you didn't get, get to come for 10 pound you got to come for nothing if you were a tradesman and ex-serviceman right so um, we landed in Fremantle 1947 October the 6th actually 1947 it's a good memory and I was brought up over there by the um, uh, St. Joseph's nuns and by the Christian brothers mm -hmm. where in a sense that's where I suppose uh, I dev um, the entertaining sort of lust developed with the, the brothers and the Estedfords and I sang solos and I did elocution lessons with the nuns and I always had that um, feeling of wanting to perform. Right. Uh, I, I, I guess really even that can be traced back to Lancashire in the north of England and uh, you know maybe the, the George Formby records that my mother used to play and Gracie Fields who were from Lancashire of course. Yes. But then um, I, I, I really got sidetracked because I joined the Royal Australian Navy as a 13-year-old cadet midshipman in 1954. And uh, I was well on the way to being an admiral or whatever uh, when I failed <laughs> that. I failed that most important subject, navigation, oh, in yes. my sub-lieutenant's courses. And when I went back to Perth in the early 60s, um, I, I somehow, I was doing amateur theatricals and I was uh, asked to audition for a country radio station in Geraldton, 6GE, oh, as, yeah. a, as a trainee, as a cadet announcer. Right. So uh, I went up there and, I, gosh, the first day I walked in, you know, it wasn't like uh, this newfangled equipment now. It was uh, all turntables and reel-to-reel -reel tapes and I saw these guys doing it and I thought, well, I'll never be able to, because in the country in those days you had to do everything. You, mm. you controlled yourself and yes. did the speaking as well. My word. But uh, sure enough, in three or four days, as you do when you're young, you pick things up pretty quickly. You do. And I was away and running. And, and that's really, that was, um, that was my professional start. That's, as I recently told the um, Australian Workers' Union annual cabaret and ball, that's when I joined uh, Equity, as right. was. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, the Media Alliance. So that's 40-something 40, 40 years ago now right and then of course there was uh, you know a move to the east which anyone in western australia that had ambition did you moved east to uh, to to further yourself because of the smallness of the market over there and um and i, I sort of finished up in advertising and and got that uh, terrific job on television as the cambridge cigarette whistler i think we'd all remember that that's the one. It's going back a long way and i i as uh, as non-smoking and as um as really anti-smoking as I am these days, I can't be too militaristic about it because it did give me that all-important break that everybody needs. And, and that was it. You know, that was national exposure and the late Bruce Gingell saw me doing that ad and suggested to Grundy's that I'd make a good quiz master. He must have had a terrific uh, <laughs> sense of the future to be right. able to do that. Right. But, uh, and, and basically that, that was it. Temptation, The Great Temptation, all those Grundy shows, Family Feud, Sale of the Century, which was really The Great Temptation. That's and right. The, the temp Temptation form. was your first, was it mm. not? Yeah, but yeah. that was actually The Sale of the Century. That's with, right, it was um, that SAP format. Well, it was, uh, in those days, I think uh, production companies grabbed formats from America and changed one or two things like the name yeah. <laughs> to sort of avoid paying rights. That's really. right, yeah. And that was it. So, um, yeah, the, the, and, and since then, I, I guess I've been pretty much gainfully employed in, um, in one form or another of advertising, entertainment, advertising, commercials, um, television, as you mentioned now, Channel 31, Renaissance, mm -hmm. television for grown-ups, as That's we right. call it. Yeah, well, we're sort of radio for grown-ups. Radio for grown-ups. But exactly. uh, I, just harking back to your mm. transition into television, did you find that easy, Tony? Well, I think I did, because in at that time, um, one didn't know enough. One wasn't... Um, aware enough really to be too terrified of it 
And for me, it was just an extension of what I was doing in the in the television commercials. And I had a very good executive producer called Lyle McCabe who insisted on me being me because I think the, the first the pilot episode and a couple of episodes I, I had this sort of feeling that I could be another Bert Newton or perhaps you know Dean Martin with a layback voice and I was trying to be so relaxed and cool and he said you're not a cool person you're he said you're you're hot you're a runner and a jumper and and you're you know full of life and you have you just have to be that and put the format and the uh, certainly be aware of the format, but just run that your way, not anyone else's. Yeah. Don't try to be anyone else. Just right. be yourself. Yes. And I still think that's the basic key to to many forms of presentation, not only television, but I, I frequently um, counsel um, executives who have to make speeches and get very nervous, you know, the mm. companies I work for. And I, yeah. I say, look, whatever you do, don't try to be God's gift to public speaking. Just speak from the heart yes. and be yourself. No, be, as long as you natural. know your subject, people mm. are more interested in what you have to say than yeah. the way you say Once you start being concerned about, oh, do I sound right? Am I, am I looking right? <laughs> You're actual, the main thrust of your presentation is down the tube. That's then. right. You yeah. lose it straight away. I can remember in our, when I was being raised, uh, I can remember watching the sale and mm. temptation and all that. And I remember you always bouncing around and carrying on. But that was you, as you say. Well, that was your that's, that's the way I felt. And, yeah. and I remember Lyle said to me, that's how he, I think he, that's how he got that um, hallmark performance, you know, that, that uh, mm. Mm. the essence of, of me. He said, how do you feel about doing this? I said, this is the best thing that's ever happened to me. I just love being, he said, well, let's see that, you know, get out there, run to the desk, get into it and yeah, exactly. express that uh express that that feeling so was the were the shows always uh recorded or did you was anything live to air and no even days? by then and that was like 79 on uh, 69 onwards mm. um we were we were recording not of course to videotape at first but to those old-fashioned kinnies but kinnies, it was yeah. it was always recorded right uh, there was always some live involvement you know you did promotional appearances on yep. on the tonight shows and things like that so right. there was a certain amount of life yeah. i actually i quite uh, i quite like live involvements because uh, it takes away that opportunity and uh, especially with the the directors and the behind the scene blokes to to make it absolutely perfect you know right. yes. there's a feeling that if uh, and i suppose that that's another fine form of art mm. cinema and so forth where mm. they do take after take and, and it has to be perfect yeah but essentially uh, there is something very appealing about that knife edge most recently i had that experience with um who wants to be a millionaire which is a terrific format and that celebrity edition uh, and i think they did one other the same the celebrity version mm. was absolutely live 8 30 um, all the stations around Australia came online and, and away we went. That's an interesting and concept for these yeah, days because well, they think. like to be able to, you know, cut things. Sure, and, sure. But it, it it's good. It gets everyone on that, that slight edge and, um, and you know you can't go back and do it again. It's true. It's good. Now, listen, you also uh, are a singer of some note, uh, Tony. Well, I've always, I, I think I mentioned the, the, the Christian Brothers, uh, with with their Estedfords at, at CBC Fremantle, the Estedfords were even more important probably than the than the football, mm. and we had a very um, a very enthusiastic and uh, extremely good Irish teachers, the brothers. So uh, and and they turn. I I used to sing all the pop songs that Mum and Dad on the ra had on the radio, but they actually started. They got some sort of a voice out of me. So I, I and I I was at one stage. I think the under eleven, under twelve, and under thirteen boys soprano champion of uh, Western Australia. So I I had that background, and always enjoyed it. You know, I always liked singing. I could never make up my mind though exactly what type of singer I wanted to be because I like so many different kinds of music. Yeah, well, we, we play quite a bit of your music on the station because it suits our format beautifully. And I've got in my hand this lovely CD, Love Changes Everything. And uh, I think we might play a track now just to give you a, a voice, a break. Sure. And why don't we have that lovely song from the Fantastics, Try to Remember. Here's Tony Barber. Thank you. Try to remember 
the kind of September when life was slow and oh so mellow. Try to remember the kind of September when grass was green and grain was yellow. Try to remember the kind of September when you were a tender and callow fellow. Try to remember, and if you remember, then follow. When life was so tender that no one wept except the willow. Try to remember when life was so tender that dreams were kept beside your pillow. That made us mellow Deep in December Our hearts should remember And follow Baba and try to remember. Tony, um, you're mainly involved in television now and uh, we see you on a number of channels. Uh, what's uh, the future holding and, and where are you at at this point in time? Well, tell, I, I'm, I wouldn't say mainly involved in television. I'm, I'm thankful to be still involved in television through um, the Prime Life Corporation, which is, of course, Australia's um, largest provider of um, care accommodate independent living for uh, the over 55s they and do a wonderful a job. major sponsor here major sponsor here mm -hmm. good people yeah. they've also um, established this renaissance television which is the channel 31 the community channels daytime on monday to friday between 8 and 4 p.m right where, uh, wherein they have a uh, sort of a g general use uh, programming schedule right. which I'm involved in, mm -hmm. uh, certainly in the promotion of it and, and, and being the, the face of Renaissance. We're now in, not only in Melbourne, but in Sydney. That uh, How did that go, the launch up there? Well, it was great. It was yeah. very well received in some ways because Channel 31 had, uh, in a way, an existing, a, a very strong existing uh, image and presence in Melbourne. Mm -hmm. In Sydney, it was more or less treated by the, 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 the media generally as something quite new and exciting and it was a different it was a different kind of launch and it's been right. very very successful the Oztam ratings have us registering um, you know w not within reach but at, at marginally uh, attractive figures of the of the mainstream television That's you know and certainly 
hugely popular with with our um, the the age group we're after, the demographic we're after, the mm. uh, the forty five fifty plus. Is audience. that in Melbourne as well? In Melbourne too, very very good figures during during that daytime. Mm. And I've I've done a couple of uh, major projects with them. Um, last year I took, uh, as has been my one for a, for a few years, my wife and I have been doing these Trafalgar tours hosting. They've been one of my clients as a consultant in public relations. Mm -hmm. And each year we've taken, uh, hosted a coach load of people uh, to either Europe, Great Britain, Ireland. And last year was our, 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 our really last uh, trip with them. So we took a... Um, a top lighting cameraman and a top of the range Sony with us and finished up with a 13 part series. We filmed everything from the, word, the moment we left Melbourne with these people, we picked the, the rest of the group up from interstate in Hong Kong mm. and we filmed the lot. And in terms of travel programs on television, you, you have a lot of, um, it's a lot of informa inf information, but in short grabs, you know, you go to so-and-so and you, you stay here, it costs so much, you get there. there. But, but we actually stayed with people right. and showed exactly what happens. The good, the, you know, the, the tragedy and the, and the, and the triumph, yeah. because that's what holiday travel's like. Yeah. And uh, it's been very well received, that 13-part series. They're going to they're gonna play it again on Channel 31. Uh, but I'm getting the opportunity, which I'm really loving, because uh, I've always been a bit of an all-rounder mm -hmm. in, in terms of uh, the things that I like doing. So I've also uh, produced and um, presented the, the Riversdale Cup, which is Australia's top amateur golf tournament. In March this year, we filmed the three or four days of that and the introduction. So uh, that's, that's coming on air next month as part of the golf season. And uh, there's other, other plans afoot. But I'm also, that, that, that's one of my clients. I'm also involved uh, with uh, Visi Industries, which is R uh, Richard Pratt's company, Richard yes. and Jean Pratt. Recycling? Recycling. Uh, it's, it's interesting you say that because we're, we're very obvious, of course, with our uh, with with those trucks running around. Re recycling is a huge thing, but we we really close the the loop because we make the uh, of course always the corrugated boxes. Uh, the company makes um, the paper that that goes into those boxes. We've got five big paper mills around Australia. Mm -hmm. um, now packaging, Visi Pack. So if you go into a supermarket, practically 50% of everything you see, whether it's in those PET bottles or cardboard packs or whatever, that's what, what Visi does. But of course, Richard and Jean are very well-known philanthropists. They do an, an awful lot of entertaining. Yes, very much so. So we don't only entertain the uh, our customers, but we also do a lot of charity entertaining at Rahin in that big ballroom there. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, in a sense, I, I'm sort of entertainment coordinator as well as emceeing the various functions and things. So um, I've known Richard and Jean for a long time, and uh, there was always uh, some thought that I might work for them one day, and it came up at the beginning of last year. And uh, I, I'm really happy with both sides of that. The, 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 the good the, relationship. The working, oh yeah, but they're just terrific people. And of course, Visi is is one of the largest private companies in the world. That's the other thing people don't realise. It, it's not oh, really? it's not one of these companies where people buy shares. They uh, the family owns that company, and it's a it's a terribly exciting thing that they um, they can operate in in a way that in in certain ways that uh, that public companies can't. Mm. And and decisions come very quickly and very surely and certainly you know exactly where you stand. Yeah, well, that's good. But, um, you don't have to wait on a board of management well, or whatever to make a decision. There, there is a board, but that's right. It's a yeah. It's a tightly held board. I mean, it's very exciting, and I find the, uh, the manufacturing business is very interesting too, because with my background in advertising and marketing. I find I'm also involved in a lot of seminars, and I get to, um, you know, I get to express opinions and, and have some input on um, the creative developments right. and, and the marketing and the advertising. Right. So it's good, you know. I feel I'm, I feel useful there. Yeah, well, that's great. That's great. So you're you're, you're quite a busy person when you're <laughs> sitting down. <laughs> I, Do you find so, any time for family? So my wife tells me. <laughs> I have um, I have two grown daughters. Uh, Kelly uh, turned thirty last month. Jackie's twenty. 20 going on 28 she's in Scotland at the moment she's traveling the world mm -hmm. and working but we're pretty much empty nesters they've uh, they've well and truly left home gone, and, yeah. um, and that's an interesting stage of your life too I think you know when there's uh, uh, I, we often talk about how uh, we, we had children fairly quickly and and then family life and, and bringing up a family is um, 
you know, is a full on. It's a different style of life. And then it's almost like we found when the when the kids first left. It's almost like getting to know you again. You yeah. know? Oh yes, you're the girl I married. I remember. <laughs> That's right. Now there's just us. Now yeah. we've got a, the 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 in a, in a sense the the buffer zone goes. So mm -hmm. there's just the, the two of you. Yeah. And, and we're getting used to that. And enjoying I imagine it. in due course you'll take time and travel yourself privately, well, perhaps. And yeah, we although we, we we already have done a lot of traveling. Have you? And I must say, I'm. I'm quite pleased about that. I because uh, again, I you know I, I don't believe in in saying oh you get old and you get tired, and you, but but you actually do, and travel <coughs> is uh, can be hard work mm. as distinct from holiday. I mean, you go somewhere and sit down on a beach for a month. That's one thing, but yeah. but if you're on the move, seeing these places, and everybody says, oh, we'll do that when we retire. Uh, and uh, you know, I, I I sometimes feel people leave it a, a bit late because you you need a lot of energy and yeah. strength sometimes yeah. to get yeah. around. That's true. That's true. Tony, you've given me a, a wonderful uh, interview. Um, anything else that you want to get across? Well, no, we I'm off? I'm I'm very very happy to have uh, to have been here, and I appreciate the fact that you're one of the few radio stations and networks that uh, that plays my material. Uh -huh. um, well, we appreciate you uh, making your time available and uh, this wonderful CD. We're going to play another track to take us out. But uh, thank you so much for making yourself available uh, for my listeners. I know they'll, uh, they'll enjoy listening to this. And uh, I think we might finish up on that beautiful song, Bring Him Home from Les Miserables. Thanks very much, Alex. Great pleasure. Tony Barber was my special studio guest. God on high, hear my prayer in my need. You have always been I might have known If God had granted me a son The summers die one by one How soon they fly on and on And I am old and will be gone Bring him home.